Welcome to this video on spreadsheets. And we're going to deal with some text functions that you can use in Microsoft Excel. So when we talk about text functions, what do we actually mean? We mean like functions or little tools that we can use in Excel to help manipulate text. So what we're going to do is we'll first go through the different uh, functions that we commonly use, and then we can see how we can use them in some examples. So we're going to start off with learning about all these different functions over here. So let's start with len. So the len function, if we, I've got a bunch of text over here, you can say, hello, my name is uh, Mr. Long. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a len function. So you can see there's the len function. And you can see it returns the number of characters in a text string or so, some text. So a string's another term for a bunch of text, okay? So inside the brackets, the parameter must be whatever text you want to find the length of. So that's what len's short for, it's the length. So if I press len equals len of b1, we can see that there are 25 characters in that string. That includes all the spaces and all that. So there's 25 characters in there. You can count to see if it's correct. Okay, so the other function that we can learn about is the concatenate function. Now the concatenate function is what you use when you want to combine multiple strings. So if I've got two strings here, so hello and world, Got two strings over there, two pieces of text. So I'm going to say equals concatenate. So there's concatenate. Oh, I must type it properly. Concatenate. And then in brackets, you can put as many pieces of text as you want, as many parameters as you want. So I can say that and then say comma. I want to put in then you can type in manually some text as long as you put in double quotes. So I'm going to put a space. And then I'm going to put comma, and then I'm going to say world. So I'm putting in three strings. I'm going to concatenate. In other words, add or join them. So take D4, add a space on it, and then add E4 onto it. And when I mean E4, I mean the values inside of those cells. So over here, let's put in the brackets. And there you can see we've got the word hello world. Now, I personally don't like concatenate. I don't like There's a much easier way to do it and what that way is is to use the ampersand the ampersand is if you look on your keyboard I think it's above the seven it looks something like that so what you're going to do is you're going to say hey take that d4 cell ampersand in other words add onto that a space and then add onto that the, the value in e4 it's almost like a plus sign for text so if we add D4 plus a space plus E4, we get the exact same result. I prefer to use that. It's a lot shorter, a lot easier to use. So that's what you can use instead of concatenate. Upper it changes all the text to upper case. So if I say upper and we say, let's say B1, all that's, all that's in B1, it'll change it all to capitals. And you can guess what lower is going to do. Lower, so lower is B1. There you can see they're all in small letters. Okay, now the next three are ways of copying text. In other words, trying to copy text, a certain parts of the text that you want. So left copies from the Beyonce, from the left. From the left, on the left. So, so if you copy from the left, so you got equals left, and it requires two things. So you can see that it returns a specific number of characters that start the start of the text at the front of it. So open brackets. It needs two things. It needs the text that you want to copy from, and it wants how many characters do you want to copy. So if I want to copy from that particular text, I'm going to say comma, how many characters do you want to copy? I want to copy four characters. Then it will copy the first four characters from the left. Okay, we don't want to know. let's say the word hello. So if I say first five characters, so B1 for five characters, there we go. I've copied the first five characters. Now, right means you're going to copy from the back of the string. So equals right, and the text does the exact same thing. We take the number of text, so we, or the, sorry, the number of text, the, the text that you want to copy from. Then you want to have the number of characters you want to copy from the right. So you want to copy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to copy seven characters from the right then it will copy all of those seven characters from the right. So there we go. So that's how you can copy from the left or copy from the right. Now, what happens if you want to copy from the middle, somewhere in the middle of it? Well, we're going to say equals mid. Now, mid takes in three things. It takes the text, 
it takes the start number, so wherever you want to start copying from, and then how many characters. Please note it's number of characters. It's not start character to end character. A lot of people get confused. If they copy the uh, from character four to six, they'll go four comma six. No, it's copy from position four for how many characters you want to copy. So in this case, if I want to copy the word name there, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's the 11th character we want to start copying from. So copy B1, mid. We're going to copy from the middle of B1. We want to start at position 11. And we want to copy the word name. Which, in other words, we want to copy comma four characters, including that 11. So I'll copy 11, 12, 13, 14. So let's close bracket and see if my calculations were correct. There we go. So there it copied name. And if I had said for five characters, it looks like it gave the same answer, but it actually is giving me the space as well. So just remember the space is a character as well. Now, those are great. They work very good in conjunction with the find. The find is a way of finding the position of a particular character. So, or type of string. It doesn't have to be one character. So I can say find, and it says what are you looking for? Where are you looking for it? And you can actually specify where you want to start looking for what position. Most of the time, we just use the first two. So you can actually leave that last one out. So what are we looking for? I want to find where the word ma is in that string. So you, in double quote, I'm going to say the word ma. And then I'm going to put a comma. Now, where are we looking for that? We're looking for that in B1. Got to make sure that you get the right order. If you say B1, comma, ma, it's going to return a zero because there is no hello, my name is Mr. Log inside the word ma. So that's why it must be what you're looking for first and then where you're looking for it. So it's at position eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So ma is at position eight. Okay, so what happens if we were looking for the letter M? Or let's say the capital ma, sorry. Let's see what happens if I say capital ma. Will it give me the same results? No, it doesn't give me the same results because I can't find it. Okay, so if I say the, the M, so it finds that M, but what about that second M? And so it finds the first value for that M if you want to find it. So um, if we want, yeah, so if you can want to look further on, you can always go comma, start at position nine looking for the M. And then it'll say, hey, the next M is at position 13. So start looking, only start from number nine. So after that M, so over here, start looking for the M. There it is at position 13. So that's how you can use the find. Most of the time you just need what you're looking for and where you're looking for it. This last one's value. So sometimes you will have a number, but it's in a string format. And a lot of times you put like an apostrophe. Um, if I type in 20, 25, that's the number 25. If I type 025, it converts to a number, but if you want to keep it as text, you can normally make it or either format it as text, or you can make um, the apostrophe 025, that'll make it into text. So now you see the leading zero stays. Now value will just take that text, if it's got a number, and convert it into a number. So it'll convert it into the number format of it. So sometimes you may want to use that. Okay, so we, we now know what our functions are. How do we use them? So let's do a couple of examples. I'm going to shift across to the side here. Yeah, we go. Let's hide our functions so we can see if we can try to remember them. Actually, let's let's copy this over here so we can remember what tools do we have available. So we can copy that. I'm going to over here. When we look at these examples, I want to see what tools we've got available so we can remind ourselves. Okay. So first thing, that's someone's full name. I want to get their first or their initial, which will be the first letter of their name. So that we copy in from the left. So I'm going to say equals left open bracket. We want to copy from this particular string or text. And we want to copy the initial, which is one character. So only one character. So there we've got the J for John. Fantastic. Now, how do I get the surname? Well, this or well, the first name, sorry, the first name. Now we can't just assume that every name is going to be four characters. If the name is not four characters, we want, to, we want a formula that can work for any name that gets put in here. So that's why it's not ideal to just put in copy the first four characters from the left. We want to copy. When do we know that the first name ends? Well, that's when the space happens. So we want to find where the position of the space is. 
So I'm going to, over here on the side here, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a little column here called space. And I want to find out where is the position of the space. Which of these formulas, let me just shift this up a bit. Which of these formulas will find the space? Will find this, there we go, find. Equals find. What are we looking for? We're looking for the space. So I'm going to say double quote, space, double quote. Not just double quote, double quote, because you actually want the character space. So we are looking for the space inside of the name John Smith. And that is at position five. So now for the first name, we are going to say equals, copying from the left, starting. That's the text that we want to copy from the left. And how many characters do we want to copy? We want to copy until the space. Well, actually, we don't want the space. We want one before the space. So actually, the space minus one, technically because we don't want the space. So you can do that. So that's how we get the first name. Now, how do we get this, the surname? Now, it'd be tempting to go from the right until the space, but you can't do that. We don't know, because that we don't know how many, that, just because it's space is at position five, doesn't mean that it's five spaces to the end of it. So we actually want to copy from the middle. So we want to copy from the middle. So the middle will be the mid option. So for this one, we're going to say equals mid. What text do we want to copy? We want to copy from there. When do we want to start copying? Well, we want the surname. We know the surname occurs after the space. We know when the space is going to happen. So, so I want to start from the space plus one. I don't want to start copying at position five. I want to go on one after the space. So I want to start copying from there. How many characters do we want to copy? Well, in this case, we know that the rest of the string or the text will contain just the surname. So it doesn't matter. How many, I can make it, I'm going to make it a really big number so that I take all possibilities. You can make it 100. Some people will make it the length of the string. I know it'll be slightly more, but it'll copy whatever it can. It doesn't matter that we've gone over the limit. It'll just copy whatever it can. We want to copy whatever's left over. So you can say 100, and there you can see it takes one space after, the, or one position after the space, and it copies as many characters as it can after that. And that's how we extract the name. And because we use the position of the space, that means I can change this name to a different name which has different lengths. And it will still work for that new name because we base it on the position of the space in this case, which is a position six. So there we go. Let's try another example. Let's try to get the username. The username is the front part of the at symbol and the domain will be the back end of the at symbol. It's very similar to this. It's just using, instead of a space, we are trying to find the position of the at symbol. So what is the position of that symbol? Well, I'm going to do this now inside the actual functions. You can do it inside here. If you want to break it up into a separate space, you can do it as long as you're referring to it. In this example, we're going to actually use um, the find inside of our left and our mid function. So we're going to copy from the left. We're going to copy from that particular piece of text, how many positions, how many characters? Well, we're going to go until we find, double quote, the amp or the at symbol inside of R7. So look there, we want to find the at symbol in R7. That's the number that we want. We're going to minus one because we don't want to copy. If I leave it like that, it will show you without the minus one. So if copy from the left from R7 until the position of the at symbol in R7. Now the problem with that is that it's going to include the at, so that's why we're going to find the position of at, and we're going to find that position, and we're going to minus one just to find it. If you would prefer, as I said, to break it up, say find the at symbol inside of R7, you can use that, and then instead of this find, you will just use that particular cell. So you can do that. I'm just showing you how to do it in one step. And the domain will be exactly the same like we did before. We're going to find the mid from that DOM. Let me see the equal to sign first. Equals mid, open bracket, that particular text, comma. When do we want to start copying? We want to find the position. So find the position of the at symbol inside of R7. But we don't want to start copying from there. We want to copy from one after it. So I'm going to say plus one. And how many characters? Well, However many characters the domain is, the rest of the string or the text will be the domain. You can make it 200 characters if you want it. And you will get the domain if you wanted to.
Okay, happy with that. So that's extracting the different things that you need from a piece of text. The other type of question that could ask is for you to construct a string for a code, for example. So let's have a look here. So we've got someone's name and their department and their phone number, and they want to generate a code, and this is the rule for the code. So they want the first three letters of the name in uppercase. The first three letters of the name. So we copy in from the left. So equals the left. Open bracket. We copy in the name. How many characters? Three characters. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that is correct, but we want it in uppercase. So we're going to copy that left. We're going to put that left, sorry, in upper. So convert all that left part into upper. So we've got the first part. Now on top of that, we're going to put the last letter of the department, which in this case will be the, the D. So how do I add onto the string? Well, we're going to use the, the ampersand symbol. So that will that and symbol that you guys use when you text. We're going to use the and. We're going to add onto it the last letter of the department. How do I copy the last letter? Well, that's copying from the right. So copy from the right of which from the department field, R15. How many characters? Well, the last letter, so just one. We just want one. And it must also be in uppercase. So we're going to take that right bit and put it in upper as well. Because there are no small letters, you could actually make just the whole thing in uppercase if you wanted to. We could have just constructed the string and then at the end up at everything. So there we go. So we've got the last letter of the department. Then we want numbers four to six of the phone number. So on top of this, and we're going to end on top of this, the four numbers four to six. So we're not copying from the left, we're not copying from the right, we're copying from the middle. But before we do that, let's just double check. So the numbers four to six, that's the three, six, five. Those four, there's the numbers, there's four to six. Where are they? You see there's a space there. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So we know that it will copy from position five. We're going to start copying from. Okay. So we're going to go, okay. So copy from the mid. From mid. From what text? From the phone number. Where do we want to start copying? We want to start copying from position five. How many characters do we, we want to copy? Four to six, so that's number four, number five, and number six. That's three characters. So start copying from number position five for three characters. Close bracket. So there we go. We've got the correct number. Boom, boom, boom. And then a random three-digit number. So on top of that, at the end, we're going to add some rand between and a three-digit number. Well, any three-digit number. Well, the lowest three-digit number would be 100. And the biggest three-digit number would be 999. So there's my random three-digit number. So we can see the 365 from the phone number, and then there's a random three-digit number. Now, if I copy that down, it will create the correct code, getting the first three letters of the first name, the last letter of the department, all in capital letters. Then it gets positions 46 of the phone number, and then some random number at the end, three-digit number. OK, so there we go. We've done. Text function, so the length, just to remind you, how many characters are in the string or the text, concatenate or ampersand to add strings together, upper converts to uppercase, lower converts to lowercase, left copying from the Beyonce, from the left, the left, right copying from the right, from the back of the string, mid somewhere in the middle, remember to say where you want to start copying and how many characters to copy for, find, find in a particular piece of string or text in the the text that you've got so i want to find the letter m or i find a word inside there where is it what's its position so it returns a number where it starts and value converting numbers or text into the number version of it okay hopefully this has been useful for other excel examples um you can go to our youtube channel follow us on facebook follow us on twitter give subscribe we'd love to hear from you give us your feedback and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way